So you've seen a couple of my videos so far on how to set up the firmware on the ANET A8 and the ANET E12. Well, now we need to go ahead and start tuning our printers. Now this is going to cover in this particular video how to set the PID auto-tune. Now it sounds fun, right? It's auto-tune. It'll automatically take care of it. It does, but it's very commonly overlooked. So basically if you're having uh, temperature fluctuations in the nozzle where if you set it at say 215 and it keeps varying up and down more than say three or four degrees or so and even that might be a little a little much. Uh, PID Auto-Tune will go through cycles at the target temperature and try and tune it so that it can keep it at that level as much as possible without doing too much variation. So luckily there are some codes built into Marlin firmware and we're going to be using the PID Auto-Tune feature here with our TH3D Unified Firmware Flash. This is the U1R18J. This is the current release as of a couple days ago, I believe. Um, I've checked today and there's no more updates, but it is extremely simple. We're gonna get right to the commands. We're gonna head over to the desktop. I'm gonna show you the commands to put in and we'll go from there. And right here in the U1R18J uh, contents here. This is extracted from the latest uh, firmware release from TH3D. Now in here he kindly provided something under extra programs. G-code sender. Now if we go here, you'll probably recognize this as prompter face. And this is what we're going to use right here to connect to our printer and send commands. And we can also monitor things from here as well. So first we need to make sure, in my case, that I'm on COM3. I am connected. We'll hit connect, and now you'll see that we have a bunch of information right here. So as you can tell, especially right here, I've already been through a number of setup routines here, and what we're going to focus on is the PID auto-tuning. Now this is really easy. Now I'm going to give an example configuration with mine. Uh, you're obviously, your results will vary a little bit. So we're going to start off with M303. S215C10, so M303, S215C10. Now what does that mean? Well, M303 is going to be testing, uh, is going to be running the auto-tune. S215, in this case, I'm going to be running this to test at 215 degrees Celsius. And C10 is the number of cycles, so I'd like it to cycle back and forth across the band, across the average of the 215 degree mark 10 times in order to get a slightly more accurate reading. Now this goes pretty quick, so we don't have to worry too much about that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna let it do its thing and when it's done, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so you'll notice that it finished, and it's going to continue to scroll here, but it left us with some values here. So I'm really quickly going to copy these. Now you don't have to put these in the configuration file. You can actually uh, simply put them in uh, through the interface here, which of course I need to write these down really quick. So we're going to do 23.93, 1.85, 77.44. Those are my P, I, and D values. Now what we need to do is we need to send this all to the printer. Now we do that with the M301 command. So M301. Next we do P and then the number that we got for P, which would have been our first one, 23.93. Space I, the number for I that we have, so that was 1.85, and D, which was 77.44. Now, I'll simply say sending, there's no confirmation. Now, what we can do just to be on the safe side is we're going to do an M500 and save settings to the EEPROM inside the printer. So, M500, sending, and that's it. Again, there's no confirmation. 
Now you've tuned your printer using PID Auto-Tune and your hot end should now stabilize around the given temperature that you set, whether it's 215 in this case, uh, 220, 225, 260, whatever you set it at, it should have a better idea what it needs to do in order to keep the temperature where it is. So with that guys, I hope that was helpful. I'll be back here shortly with another video on how to do some more calibration settings. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe. If you found it helpful, let me know. If you need help with something or you have a request, maybe something you'd like to see in a future video, post in the comments section and I will try to reply as much as I can. I also suggesting hitting up th3dstudio.com. Timothy Hoogland has been an absolutely amazing guy so far and I definitely like his firmware, his products. Uh, hopefully we'll develop maybe uh, a little bit of a professional business relationship here in a little bit, but we'll see how things go. With that, guys, I will put links in the description to everything that you need. Uh, yeah, that's it. Real simple. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you guys in the next video. Later.